I can't blame this book for this idea. They practically screamed as it was going to happen at the end of the second book. What am I supposed to do? of the werewolf the 1978 novel by guy n smith two years after the second book which came out two years after the first book and speaking of continuity i guess what do you notice about this book's cover hmm? it's practically the same as the previous books look at that the only difference is that there's a little town down there and a moon up there what the what the hell but to be fair, I like this cover more. It has more detail in it. This review will contain some spoilers. You have been warned. This is the third and final installment in the Guy and Smith Werewolf Trilogy. This is not the last werewolf book he ever wrote. In fact, there's two more that I'm aware of. Maybe more. But this is his darkest werewolf book that I've read. And definitely the darkest of the trilogy. The plot. So, Margaret gave birth to a child. Was it Vic Guns, or was it the bastard Tom Owen? And this child, there is something off and evil about it. He doesn't learn anything in school. He doesn't know how to read, write, add, subtract, anything. In fact, he's just a bully. He attacks kids, and eventually the schoolmaster has to step in, and it turns pretty bleak. He kills the schoolmaster, or so the mother thinks. Everyone else is like, nah, he was defending himself from the crazy schoolmaster. Nah, it, it was uh, Hugh, which is the child's name. And uh, so they send him to prison for manslaughter, which is not a life sentence. And when he gets out, he's 15 years old now, and he is pissed. He runs away from home, and shenanigans, and events occur that are just sick. It was almost the perfect end to the series of books. Almost. Addressing a rather large plot hole, since this is the son of Tom Davis, aka Tom Owen, Philip Owen's brother. He possesses similar characteristics of his father, namely that he's a freaking werewolf. Spoilers if you have not read the second book. Well, I mean, I said spoilers in the intro, but, you know. I didn't want to talk about this in my review for the second book, because I feared it might deter you from reading it, or even the series as a whole. However, now that I have been backed into a corner, I have nowhere to escape, and there's no way to escape saying this. In Return of the Werewolf, there is no werewolf. Tom Davis, aka Tom Owen, was wearing the previous werewolf's skin, like his fur and everything, to make it appear as though he was a werewolf. He rapes Margaret Gunn, and she gives birth to his child. However, now that the boy is showing signs of lycanthropy, there's just one huge question. Why? If Tom Owen was not a werewolf, then how did this come to be? Guy and Smith never explains it. I realized this after reading the book, because I felt like something was missing. I thought about it for like maybe a, an hour, and I was I came to the assumption that I'm like, yeah, shit. I was correct. I wasn't thinking about the plotline not making sense. I was thinking back to see if any mention of Tom Owen actually being a werewolf was mentioned in the second or third book. I couldn't recall any incident like that. It's kind of like Guy forgot to give an explanation, so he decided to treat us with a lot more settings, scenarios, and kills than the previous two novels combined. It makes up for the second book's lack of killing and bloodshed. It's almost like this book shouldn't have existed, happened, whatever you have, whatever you say. It shouldn't have happened. It happened regardless, though. However, I still found enjoyments to be had in Son of the Werewolf. To backtrack a bit, it's made perfectly clear that Tom and Margaret's son, Hugh, is a bad seed. 
he is always getting into brutal fight at school, and he eventually, like I said, kills the principal, schoolmaster, whatever. He is sent to prison on manslaughter charges, since they couldn't convict him of the crime for the lack of evidence against him. It's there he learns that he is a werewolf, and he is in a cell every night trying to stop himself from becoming one, usually failing. Margaret and Vic Gunn, as well as Gordon Hall, return. Gordon Hall's wife doesn't come back. I don't think she's even mentioned, which is kind of weird as well. They are all the main players, those three. Even though they sit at home awaiting Hugh's return for most of the book, you can still feel their presence. The police force are not brought to handle the situation because Margaret doesn't want them to kill Hugh. Margaret feels ultimately responsible, and Vic is pretty much lost in his own horror throughout this book. Gordon is the come save us Mr. Macho Man kind of character who wants to take the beast down. There are three new settings in this book, the hospital, city, and a gypsy camp. Which, as I said in the first book, it would have been perfect if it had a gypsy setting. Now that this book isn't perfect, and it has a gypsy setting, it's like, damn it, you should have had that in the first book. But regardless, all three settings make for quite gruesome shenanigans. There's also a pretty brutal rape scene in the hospital, which was very uncomfortable. The city also has a rape scene involving the werewolf and a prostitute. It's rape, rape, rape in this book. Like... This book is vile and disturbing, and I think it took itself a step further than the previous two installments. Hell, I don't think it. I freaking know it. This book goes far. The gore! We get brutal mutilations and rape sequences. A gypsy gets an axe embedded in his head. And more. It's quite the atmospheric book. There's a scene in particular where a trio of thugs are killed and it's pretty much off page, but it's still unsettling to say the least. Like, it's pretty much just in the dark, a black room, and they're getting killed. It's on page, but off screen. It's hard to explain. Besides a glaring plot hole and uncomfortable subject matter to certain readers that might deter them from wanting to check this one out, I think this was a pretty good final book. It's a well-written sequel in this trilogy of terms of descriptions, and I felt it has great atmosphere, as well as settings, kills, and a climax that had me at the edge of my seat. No joke, I was on the bus reading this, I was like, holy crap. One other problem I had was I felt the climax was pretty lackluster. It did leave room open for a sequel, kind of. I mean, it all wrapped up way too easily, but it still left you with that haunting feeling. Maybe someday, the black dogs will return. Overall, I give Son of the Werewolf a 2.5 out of 5. It's a decent trilogy overall. I enjoyed every book. They're not particularly good books, but they're not bad books, if you know what I mean. Thank you all for watching, and I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Let me know what your favorite installment in this trilogy is, and also make sure to like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon. The links are in the description below, and leave comments and subscribe.